Hi, I'm Daniel, and Futurama is returning for its fourth era this year, and I have mixed feelings about it. I have already made videos on the first two eras, and the concept of one of Futurama. To finish this, I watched through all the revival era and rank them. Well, it's technically you can see the Comedy Central era now because there's another revival, but I'm still going to call it the revival era. This is live for two or four seasons, it's from Kia. We live in a world where Futurama could have eight ways to arrange a number of seasons, and the next show will make it worse. Anyway, I consider just doing a top 25 like the classic era, but this has more interesting episodes at the bottom. The weakest classic episodes was boring or problematic, there's little in between. This is probably my youngest ranking yet but I may note each episode so it should be easier to write. I have defended this era before, and as a year past I like more in this era. The fifth episode of this one has the joke, didn't we used to be the Ivory Company, and I prefer that. If you are to take Fry getting used to the future, and the Ivories, I'll tone down for more interesting premises. There's some episodes that didn't hold up as well on rewatch, paired up with some bad than I remember. Other people have ranked Futurama episodes before, but I will still do this for a show I really like. So, what are the worst and best Futurama Revival episodes? I'll say my overall top 10 of the show at the end. 52 Newtopia Something that I should mention at the start is that Futurama is consistently funny. Every episode has at least a couple of jokes that work, so few episodes will be ranked high for the comedy. I bring this up because yes, this has a few funny moments, like Hermes say he found the point in the mortgage, and if they pay it they can avoid being evicted. That said, this really made all the character sexist in another gender fight story. This tries to tackle gender issues while being heavy stereotypical at the same time. It goes and spends the first two acts while sexing against women. Then the end tries to came with bear giving as a woman. That whole ending part is also weird. I often dislike assuming things, but whose idea was that? This episode is just not Futurama for me, for being so hateable and generic. This feels like what would be expected from most adult animation. 51. Proposition Infinity This is such a bad idol for gay marriage that's incompetent. Verbal sexual marriage is in concept of Don Pariel and isn't the same where it's not just the attraction that's coming to your ego. They also should have had new characters instead of Bender and Amy. Both characters have too many youth interests so the relationship isn't believable. It also doesn't help that it shows the worst of both of them. I know it's status quo, but having them end up back in a normal relationship makes it seem like a phase. This episode is bad, but it has a few funny moments and the anti robo sexual art is surprisingly realistic. End of a name should never happen, I still haven't mentioned again, or yet I missed something. Fifth day, Holiday Spectacular. The anthology episodes were mixed, but this doesn't have that much of a theme changing around. This just has three few drama holiday shorts, and none of which might be good. The first should have been expanded, but all segments have a forced ending of them dying. It's not funny and only there for shock value. At least this show is more holidays than Christmas, but it is disappointing after a tale to Santa's being a masterpiece. 49. The Butter Drunk Effect It seems they wanted an episode about Amy and Year dynamic, but we just wrote around that. Instead of having a story be the very naturally, Raging Bend also already a fine sports episode that is way better. I guess I do like the futuristic take on performing enhancing drugs, but I don't like the weird angles the story goes into. 48. Sap Ding Rat I don't know how much you changed the revival, but I don't like revival Sap Flanagan, especially without Kiff finding him out. The story of him getting a ratio of Yuya's mother is one I don't like. It just shows the worst in all characters involved. I can't even call it bad at the bottom four. It just has nothing to make me remember it fondly. 47 in a Garden of the Year. I just got the Garden of Eden title reference. That still isn't funny, and the level he goes in this episode is more uncomfortable over being funny. I guess there's some comic ideas of censorship, and I love Bender's guinea pig yarn, but this episode isn't enjoyable. 46, Yee Yee and the Gain Stock, nice adventure time reference, very weak episode. Again, feels like they wanted a final year episode, but didn't know what to do. So, throw it together with a parody, commentary on genetic engineering, and nothing being gained from this experience. 45, Yeko, yeah, I'm not gonna try and say that. Yee Yee and me funny comic for Yee, but a full episode about Yee doesn't work. There's no reason given to care about marriage for goals. This episode had barely any chance for a middle. At least the Comic Con and Fry trying to make a comic was good. Not great, just good. 44 The Inhuman Torch. This episode is quite forgettable. Ben knows plenty as always, and this does a good job showing his positive traits. I don't like Fry here, he just comes off as so unlikable, especially in the climax. He also decides the story paths this decides to take. 43 Nature Armor. 
This has a good concept for an anthology episode, and I really like the narrator. I've not seen too much Nature documentaries, but I know there's a big variety in the different segments of shows. This makes it seem like all animals do is mate, since that's the main aspect in all the segments. I like the opening fish part, for having other jokes, and the concept for Scented Hank on all the act. The other two are boring, this ruins what could have been a good episode. 42, As He Come Home. Compared to the episodes this is above, I guess it accomplished what I tried. I see the point why Bender's last episode be about the shiny metal. It represents the fiosco part of Bender's episodes, but this is just a weaker episode. It feels like early Futurama in a negative way, but the opening being a disconnected story and a random journey aspect. It would also be better if they kept that ending instead of forcing a cop out at the end. Wouldn't it have been far more better if we didn't get that part back? This story episode will be improved if it stuck to that ending. 41, The Bots and the Bees. Episodes from this point on have enough good in, but I don't enjoy your aspects in them. I don't get the concept of the robot reproduction and the comedy in the first half. The part with the vending machine is annoying, but as far as it goes, Bender's story was still surprisingly emotional. Also, this was the first episode of the second production season, so it has a great opening scene with the Planet Express symbol. 40, All the President's Heads. I remember liking this episode, but it might have just been because Hamilton gets one from the iron in it. This episode didn't hold up as well as I remember. The American Revolution setting in characters has some fun towards it. However, the ending part where that fail isn't good. This goes by things just happening because they are happening, instead of feeling naturally paced. 39. The Science of the Camps. This is quite forgettable being a mob protection story. I like the twist of that being a random innocent robot and everyone celebrating that. There's also Storybook's role in this episode being great. Aside from that, this is far from my favourite. 38. That Darn Cat. On the one side, this episode has an underrated duo of Amy and Nibia. Amy is established through competent of science and an interesting character. This is also one of the only times you arrive or utilize Nibia, and the struggle of being a pet while being a superior feature. My probably main mainly realize on the sci-fi strange concept, cats having their own planet to try and turn the Earth's rotation is too random. Can't be that aspect of your drama is a smart premise. This is just random and pushes the anti-cat trope, but I can't complain when I'm a big Owl Dogs fan. If the thing and plot were better thought out, this could have been great. 37. Fry I'm the Eggman. So the episodes you never can forget of all. I do like the animal thing Fry raises from to another planet, and the Scooby Doo egg reveal. This might just be funny enough to the past other episodes. Even if I have more to say and will remember the episodes more. 36. The FIFA Baghead. Then they were coming to Fiash Mob on CFT's personal yikes. This is very funny, but I don't make Gangnam Cobbs. He wasn't introduced to him like a villain, and he seemed like he would just be a casual person. But suddenly the story treats him as having a big ego. He could have better established his whole character, and the sci-fi aspect. How can Yon also die for the sake of acting? I wonder if there will be a follow-up to that story point of one of the best episodes. 35. T the Terrestrial. This is a fine E.T. parody. It does a good job exploring years of history with his son. This is a better way to do an alien episode, but it's not trying to combine them with the main cast. Most there is a fry being stranded on their planet. I do find some moments nice with him driving a fence with a year son. It's also funny how Ben managed to call for Fry's disappearance for so long. The ET elements of the story are fine. It mainly just doesn't feel like future drama, and you can tell the show is starting to use its touch near the end. I think this thank you'll make it clear that I prefer the first half over the second half of this one. 34 Rebirth. Starting off the good episodes is the first one. I'm not sure it needs to have a meta plot of everyone being revived, but this has a likeable twist for Fanny's year's story. Also, Ben having to party or he'll explode is extremely funny for how it's in the background. I love the yarn Ben to stop shrinking the hell up. The ending also feels quite contrived. 33 Near Death Wish. The story has a fourth season and some jokes do drag on for too long. Especially near the start. However, I do like what this means for fans worth character. His dynamic with Fry is explored, and meeting his parents with a good backstory established. 32. Attack of the Kira. I guess you understand the original worry that the show will be more modern. This take on technology to fight your age well. I called it a futuristic twist by having phones to set in the eyes, and the concept of Fry and Bender having a video off where you works. Mom is also a good villain here, who fits the story she's in. 31. Fun and the Bun. They finally made an episode about Bender's catch rage, but Bender's barely in it. I like the idea of both Fry and Yaya using memories of each other. The parallel between both their stories is greatly done, but does your best Fry and Yaya stories. And the opening set piece doesn't do a good job of the relationship. 
I'm just shook at the yes, and we'll see our episodes from this point on a week, folks. 30. 40% yeah, baby. Kinda wish the episode with that title was worse, so I could put it in the 40 section. I guess it was beaten how much Bender episodes there was near the end. But I just find the concept of Bender becoming a folk singer, whose song years become reality, just funny. It's an interesting idea, and the style of music just sounds good and fits the context. The song is getting stuck in my head since so trying to record this. 29. The mutants are revolting. Fry is made very dumb for story communities at the start, but this is a good for our year reaction episode. The message of discrimination is on the nose. Well, well done for handing the mutants being segregated to B.O. I also think this works in the 100th episode. I echo they try to make it meta with being the 100th delivery, but they point out how that would mean you only done 10 deliveries per year, yeah. And the sniper is also fun, and I love his glasses. I am judging episodes on the quality of a character's glasses. 28. The Ghosts in the Machines. This episode is a good exhibition of robot life versus human life, and it's quite funny. I like the concept of Ben the Haunting Fry and the way that's done. This is the only Ravi episode that actually used the robot devil, and that's a shame he's a great character. The ending is a bit forced, but it's still a good episode. 27. Free Will Hunting. Ben this arc of wanting free will is deep and interesting, and I like some ways the story goes, and sad Ben is often engaging. The robot free will idea is inconsistent, with the of how robots are presented in the show. I don't like the opening Eden for the story. This has strong potential, but it's not reasonable which it should. I debated the Yacht where to put this on the yacht, because the Yacht elements are yike, but also elements that could have done the Yacht better. I ended up putting it here, a spot that just missed out the upper half. Well, it seems the yacht is halfway done. 26. Benderama. The plot of Bender cloning against Moy each time is great, and yet could he try to genocide the Benders. The particles of water being made alcohol is funny. The problem keeps getting yo is the monster characters in Hushin. The need for a climax at the end starts to soil it. 25. 2D Black Top. I was already enjoying the first half of the professor joining a group of spaceship bases, but the ending makes it work. The 2D and they are sent to for the third act is really fun, even if it kind of came out of nowhere compared to the rest of the episode. 24. The Season 3012. I can't decide if Futurama's take on politics is dumb or genius, it seems to be both at the same time. Anyway, this is a strong episode for the use of the characters involved. Here you're pushing politics, fits her character's strengths, and Bender is consistently funny. The new character his backstory also works, and like the ending paradox. Time travel disappears for changing the future, but then disappearing removes that change to the timeline. Either way, the future is doomed. I wonder if this future will start happening in the upcoming seasons, considering it will take place in the 3020s. 32. A Clockwork Origin I really like this take on the evolution debate, yielding to careful and funny moments. I am not religious, but I like how the story shows creationism can coexist with evolution. It shouldn't be a debate of one or the other and placed against each other. I like this episode, but the media is a bit dragged out and put the commentary on this issue over the episode's events. 22. Stents and Sensibility is it both overrated and underrated? To the start, the Bender side is a bit forced, but I find it enjoyable. Bender is funny and I like him meeting someone else evil who teams up at the end. Bender accidentally saving someone's life is funny. Also, they need to be more randy because he's great and a queer icon. So the main plot, I like Soyberg character and this shows his Jacobal selfish traits. However, Marianne is so generically perfect that I don't buy the story or romance. Even if it could have been done better, I'm at least glad Soyberg got a happy ending for the penultimate episode. I can't wait to see if or how it will be contradicted. 21. The Six Million Dollar Mon. This episode is funny and a strong contender for Hermes' character. His want to be furious and useful ties to his robot transformation arc. Soyberg is great as always, fourth void in this episode. Although I like Roberto, his inclusion has a vein as force and this episode doesn't have much else going for it. Still, I find you enjoyable about this episode. 20. Saturday Morning Fun Pit This is a funny episode that makes you stay on fire, Jay, but it did need a fame device of Nixon and measure about violence and censorship. The Scooby-Doo part has some charm, but it's too overly parodied and the J.I. Sap censoring jokes it's over 7 minutes. It is mainly this high for the middle segment of the Purple Berries. It is kind of a commentary on how much advertising is forced in children media, with the constant cuts to the serial ad. Every single event that happens is just to promote a new brand of serial. I also love how the professor keeps repeating I must get my hands on those purple berries while barely doing anything. That is one of my favourite future moments that pushed the episode up 9 to the other world out.
17 called Warriors. It is a bit weird choice for a Disney Plus order to have two time switch episodes back to back with this and Tip of the Soyberg, but both are great. Go over that episode in a couple of shots. This should have happened earlier in the show's run for the common core plot to make sense, but I do like the pandemic aspect. Insert a COVID joke here. The flashbacks of Fry's family arc is great. I liked the very much of Fry's dad in that end scene. This may be the worst in the Fry family saga, but it's still a good episode. 18. A farewell to arms. An interesting end of the war plot line where they have to decide to only save 30,000 people. There's a nice arm motif set up, even if that leads to a weird ending. I don't have much more to say other than this is just a good episode. Also, why is this episode in the wrong aspect ratio on Disney Plus? They're yet to be cropped in a way that doesn't like the TV screen. 17. Viva Mars Vegas. This one kept getting higher as I was rethinking my yes. I really like the heist planning story, and this does it in a great comedic way. I like the focus of Soyberg and Amy. This is a strong episode both for them, while the rest of Planet Express are a good con for Eve. It's also a social commentary about the divide between the rich and the poor, the scamming of gambling, and fixing the organisation of Mars episode's problem. This episode just a yard fun from start to finish. 16. Game of Tones. This isn't as great as it could have been in the story department, but I can ignore that. Fry really likes he actually didn't hate his family is a great moment for his character. I also like the dream he's facing at the end. Maybe his plot twist isn't that bad, but it could have had least some way of predicting it, it just feels like it comes out of nowhere. That's the ignorable aspect of a strong episode. 15. The Da Vinci Code. This episode is underrated for exploring Fry and Fran's worth dynamic in a great way. The first half being a mystery quest is a great few drama set that I wish was more used. The second half with a world of smart people is great. I like the concept that Da Vinci was the most stupid person on the higher planet, and if they're standing to see him and fans were stupid, what would that mean for people like Fry? In your Fry's line, you make me ashamed to call myself an idiot. The comedy is also really good. To add on to the interesting concept of where you'd rather be in the stupid world or smart world. My only kind of problem is it doesn't scream a future story with everyone still alive after over a thousand years. It seems more like a present day story, but it's still a strong episode. 14. You're an Oracle. I like the comedy and peace score part and joke about Avatar's 3D and... The part with the Oracle predicting crimes before they happen is very really interesting and for what it means for the potential future of Bender involved. I don't know directly what this is parodying, but it's probably something interesting. Yanni against the all-seeing being shouldn't have worked, and there's a few comedy I didn't like, keep your yellow on my list. I wanted this to be harder, because it's the episode that made me originally thought the revival was better. 13. 30th Century Fox. This episode is really underrated for how funny the comedy is. The icon the opening tricks the audience into thinking this is going to be a year protesting episode, but it's really about Bender. Him protesting for robot rights ties his motivations and wants, as well as Bender just being funny. The commentary on hunting and the climax scenes are golden, and that you have the irony of Yuya wanting to kill the fox after her save the fox sign was destroyed. I think I've only seen this episode twice, but it's still a classic with a clever title. This is also the best from what's called season 9, only our 13th place, but that's the weakest retro episodes. 12. The Tip of the Soyberg. This is a great job making story for both a comedic and serious character by establishing the interactions with fans worth and why he's never been fired. The flashbacks and this episode cutting from past to present is used, but it isn't used for fire episodes like all the other examples. This gives backstory to the older characters of fans worth and Soyberg. I really like the dynamic setup and how Soyberg gets the eye for riches just to be there for his friend. This has strong comedy but an emotional core too, and yet the ending where you think it's going to be a joke on Soyberg, but fans worth invite him. There's some parts about the present day story that could have been done better, but the tip of the Soyberg is still a great episode. Yeah then, Fry and Yeeya's big thing. I like seeing Fry and Yeeya having a healthy relationship in the start, and even the drama Yeta is my old. I like the story of them going to a sort, and the twist involved in it. The exploration through Monkey World is good, and I like the return of Gunter from Mount University, and the sewer traction with Fry and Yeeya. It didn't need to be a climax, it would have been funny if they just realised they couldn't do anything about it. However, the ending is very really funny. Bender wanted to tell Fran Yeeya, but then being told not to, until eventually being yelled. The credits start, then get interrupted by Bender screaming, You were in a sue, and the audience has to imagine the aftermath. This is a great episode that just missed out on the top 10. 10. The Prisoner of Bender. While these pop episodes often aren't interesting, for being tired and predictable, it's always better when there's the artwork of the characters in the subplot. This has so much going on in comedy that's amazing. It isn't as great in the camera when trying to do something, but this episode may just yes if you watch all this play out.
Hearing that the mere scientific formula for the ending shows how much he care, the very idea of trying to calculate this is hard. 9. Mobius Dick This is such a great year episode for showing her character of yours, Cheyenne, Jacob she wanted the statue redone. Jacob just handles the reveal of obsession with feeling her and the previous captain. The space whale attacking them is good sci-fi premise, there's also a author plan that expresses history, and Soyberg is great here. One of my favourite jokes is the flashback in the he showing him with hair, but the professor says they were imagining it wrong. But later, he grew hair just so he could turn white. I like the story about former element, adding to this underappreciated episode. 8. Meanwhile This is a great finale to end the show on. It's not quite as strong as I thought. I don't like Fry committing suicide and the little appearance from Bender. The show is mostly about the trio, but all but one finale does focus on them too. I also question time freezing for so long, but there's cool ideas for them living a life together. The way it ends with going back in and playing a time youth is superb. It's not the best as we're intending to be a finale, but it's the best at being a finale. Too bad it won't be the last episode soon. 7. Murder on the Planet Express, or the Among Us episode. Some Futurama fans got annoyed because it's referencing some other thing, but I will always call it the Among Us episode. This is strong at being a fan of the episode for the Planet Express dynamics, putting them in person to all their issues. The predictable twist is half a beyond early, and the climax being going Among Us is full of great jokes. The ending of Ryan Bender is really memorable and genius. This whole episode is just really funny. 6. Yo Yeah 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 I've seen this referred to as the worst episode, and I don't see that, for the genius of the comedy, and the parody not being an essential part of it. It is really funny with the plot of Yee making a TV show. The twist is great for how weird it is to believe one dimensional wholesome kids show characters can exist in real life. I love the ending where Yee wants to feel bad for this, but they end up a happy ending that she doesn't like. Watching this episode off as Yuya being unlikable seems like it's missing the point. There's so many great lines and background moments that I find very really funny throughout. The sign today young people shows the awards, tomorrow old people shows the awards, brackets the Oscars. This episode was almost fifth shot, but you asked me I switched it around with another. 5. Overclockwise. This works out for night for increasing the stakes and having a randy appearance. I like the your suit mom has against fans where fuck Hubert overclockwise in Bender. This leads to interesting court scenes, and Mom's best role in the revival. He also like how Yeeyas want to do more and like past Planet Express and Fry not sure about that. The ending where they see the future of the relationship is a good ending. Bender's overall story time of wanting a point in life is greatly concluded, and I can't say that about any other Naye, so far at least. Him ascending to a high level is intriguing to see a wiser version of the character, all of this leads to Fry's almost using everything. The overall stakes this episode are felt. Combined with reincarnation, this would have been a good finale pairing. Also, it's a funny episode, especially Nibia's off screen musical. 4. Calcion 2.0 I forgot to bring into Calcion 2.0 before this rewatch. It has strong comedy about the demon ritual to revive Calcion and the actor's overacting an ego. But that is compared with complex material about the industry moving on from him and now he has no legacy. It takes the Bring Back Life story and does something surprisingly emotional with it. The way a comedic character like Calcion changes near the end is compelling. It has aspects for the main thrill to be involved in as well, and making it an overall highlight. One nitpick is that Calcion didn't need to die at the end, but that is just at the end. It is easily the best from the second batch of episodes. 3. Youth Inspection This and the next shows haven't talked about yet, but they deserve it for being so amazing. Then the fine self is immortal and goes on a journey with Hermes to find Inspector 5, and then Mom is trying to kill him for being defective. It sounds like it'll be a comedic premise, and that is there, but it goes harder than you'll expect. Seeing how yay is here and not caring Bender is, seeing him genuinely worried about death is emotional. Hermes is also great here, and that ending reveal montage is a such spectacular episode from this run in all your future armor. 2. The Yay Fear of Joe Fry Do I even need to talk about this episode? First off, the title is amazing, following the clever triple meaning. This expertly tells a sci-fi story, Fry and Yee's story and comedic episode. It does all that at the same time, but now it feels like it's doing too much at one time. Remember to keep your breathing room moments. I just really like this take on time travel only going forward, and all the futures are great to see. Then being Goss in the far future, and Fry setting to just watch the world then is a great moment. But that's not it, the big bang happened out there and life is just a never ending cycle. That is a natural way to tell the character to get out of the situation without being forced. It also used to yoga comedy. Yuya's story is also strong, as she is the full life separate from this. Her finding out the truth and everything is just really powerful. 
This whole episode is amazing and probably the best, but we didn't want it to be generic. It almost was number one, but I couldn't help think I prefer the other one. Which is... I'm just wasting time here. One, reincarnation. This is a masterpiece of the anthology format by confining Futurama's style with other mediums in a seamless way. Each has a superb style and its purpose for your limiting. The old business segment is fun for how everything is constantly moving. You can have ironic accounts for the stories of the world being untrue. And have a new coin be invented without it being seen. It's also a decent fine year story while being funny. That applies to all segments where it works as a genuine story as well as a parody. The video game segment has funny game jokes while also having the conversation scene. Fans worth the fresh enough to figure everything out is interesting. Finally, Futurama is the greatest anime. The final segment is the best of the three for the comedic timings and parody of how fast the dub is made. There's so many giants and moments in this episode I think about constantly. You can tell us how much fun in all the segments, there's no weak yank. This and Holiday Spectacular are so incomparable for how they handle an anthology. I love this all the way through. The only slight change I'll make is the end on the video game one, but that says nothing about the content, just the ordering. This perfect this so much and show why you're Futurama in a non canon episode. Even the number one spot at Yay Fave J Fry would have been fair, but reincarnation has to be the best Futurama Revival episode. In conclusion, I think the Futurama Revival era is pretty good. There's a few average just bad episodes, but there's your highlights. I like the episode concept more and the comedy is consistently funny. I think it's weak in the classic era, but that has your forget what episodes as well. If I rewatch both, I don't know how different it will be. My top 10 only has 3 of every episodes, but the top 4 has 2 of every episodes. So this case though you are strong contenders, here's my year stats of now. 10, I second our motion, 9, Jurassic Park, 8, Insane in the Mainframe, 7, Youth Inspection, 6, A Tale of Two Santas, 5, Hells of a Robot, 4, The Yay Fay of J Fry, 3, Reincarnation, 2, The Yuck of the Fryrish, and 1, Bender's Big Score. Even though it's technically a movie. I have all videos future around where I discuss the best choices. I wonder how the show will come back. I have been worried about it for two reasons. One is I prefer to stay in the 2000s idea while future is yike. And two, the characters will be a year older. There should be some change to the characters, but not as much for the world. That makes me sound specific, but it's not that much. However, the future armor setup is great. And even if it's half as funny, it will still be good. I don't see a reason why it should exist, but I'll have to wait. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching my other videos and press subscribe. This is my second youngest video that I wrote through fast, so may end up making more Futurama videos. The end. Another one of your ill-timed jokes, Fry? You and I are enemies now. Hear my words.